Hello everyone and uh, welcome to Reentry. In this video we will go through uh, the pre-launch uh, procedures uh, all the way from uh, kind of the cold and dark uh, ground configuration and prepare the uh, cockpit for crew ingress and then we will uh, finalize all the cockpit preparations all the way until the final checklists which is kind of the normal entry point for a mission and then we'll complete the final check uh, to uh, prepare the craft for ignition, but we will not go through the ascent as this has been covered in the previous lessons. So with that, the first thing you might notice is that the entire uh, capsule is kind of dark, it's, uh, uh, its lights are off and we'll need to kind of go through a lot of uh, setup. So the first thing that you might want to do is to hit F to kind of enable the, uh, the flashlight. Then we can open up the checklists and we do the interior inspection. So I'll hit run here. Then, then the first thing that it's going to ask us to do is to configure the batteries. So you can see that the main battery one uh, is actually powered uh, and has a dedicated switch on the rear of the seat of uh, where the uh, crew is sitting. So the astronaut is sitting. So then I'll set that to on. Battery 2 is all the way on the other side, so it's a separate looking switch. I'll switch that one to on. And then uh, main battery 3, uh, insert to power it. Standby battery 1 and standby battery 2. And then the isolated battery set to on. And these switches uh, should not be touched uh, unless there are a malfunction in the electric power system and, and one of the batteries are failing. Uh, then do not touch these switches throughout the mission. Um, we will need all of these batteries uh, during a flight. The next uh, thing is to go ahead and configure all the fuses to its launch configuration, which means that everything should be set to their one position. See that this is the one position, this is off. Then you have a two position. Uh, number two position is also accepted in case number one is uh, okay but let's keep everything in their one position as that's the primary position there we go then uh, we'll go ahead and start to configure uh, the panels and turn on the lights then i'll turn off the flashlight here there we go and uh, ensure that uh, these uh, switches are guarded. This is the fire retro push button, which is guarded. The same with the jettison retro push button, which is guarded. Uh, everything else uh, is fine. Then we'll need to verify that. Uh, I can also, by the way, open up this one and just go through it together with the checklist guide. Uh, all fuses in the number one position, and then we'll go through this one here. The ACS uh, mode select uh, norm auto and gyro, gyro norm. You can see that this is all correct. And then the control uh, fuel handles uh, should be in. This handle space here basically. They should be pushed in, uh, which they were. So that's why this one keeps skipping things if uh, everything is correctly. So I just wanted to quickly show this. And the same applies for the retro delay, uh, delay switch. Uh, which is here, and uh, it's currently set to instant. Photo lights, cabin lights, and uh, we set both. The uh, telemetry uh, low frequency set on. Uh, rescue switch and launch control switch should be off. Then uh, the string should be in uh, for the Jetson tower and the capsule separation. The retro attitude switch should be set to auto. And uh, uh, fire retro, and this one uh, is guarded. That's also something that we verified. And the retract switch uh, should be auto uh, here. And snorkel main and reserve rings should all be in. Uh, landing bag switch should be in auto. And then uh, we need to ensure that we have control fuel quantity uh, checked. We have 100% on auto. So we can go ahead and check that. And 100% on manual. Uh, rate of descent uh, shows zero. We're currently standing still. Uh, the altimeter is uh, at zero. 
and then uh, the satellite clocks uh, should show the uh, current time then uh, satellite clock uh, time from launch uh, should be zero the mission haven't started yet and then the uh, time to retrograde is pre-configured in this mission to four hours rate indicator should be centered the attitude indicators uh, is currently showing uh, nominal values 90 degrees in pitch your 180 degrees and roll is uh, offset and this offset will be uh, cancelled in the roll programming during the initial time of ascent and uh, cover we can already remove that now cabin pressure is uh, uh, pegged air temperature is okay suit environment indicators uh, seems uh, okay this one is high uh, due to the pressure currently set and then you have uh, oxygen and 100% on primary and same with secondary then uh, we'll need to go through a couple of other checks as well so that's the suit fan switch should set to normal the um, cabin fan switch uh, should be in its normal uh, position DC volt should be on main. Uh, Ammeter switch should be uh, set to power off, which is uh, here. And then uh, ASCS uh, AC bus should be set to norm. Standby battery should be uh, set to on. And isolated uh, battery should be set to its standby position initially. And then uh, we also had the uh, inlet valve should be set to norm and the audio bus switch uh, should be set to norm uh, ac volts should uh, yeah we are within range uh, vox switch uh, is norm and then we have uh, uhf should be set to high then we'll set transmit to off ensure that we have the cabin to uh, warning light tones for all of these lights this means that if one of these are triggered you will hear a cabin sound effect we'll set this one to its marks and then uh, we'll need to set the maneuver switch to on this is basically enabling configuring all the gyros to work with the attitude and then at t minus 40 minutes we will start the abort capability check so then i'll hit back then i'll go into abort capability as t minus 40. then i can use the time scale to uh, quickly get into the correct timing right we are now close to t minus 40 seconds so then uh, I will start that. The first thing that uh, we would need to do is to set uh, the ammeter to norm. Then we'll need to arm the squib and then we'll check uh, and monitor the isolated batteries on the DC volts and DC amps. And then uh, we will need to, I'll zoom out a little bit, uh, we'll need to trigger the uh, abort capability test on the function buttons. Once I press that, you should see the abort light. You should see an increase on the DC amps. Uh, then that seemed uh, correct, uh, which means that the next thing that we will need to do is to go through the T minus 20, uh, which is abbreviated interior checks. So this one, and this will basically go through and verify everything. Uh, we just did so let's time scale to t minus 20 minutes until ignition there we go then i'll hit run and uh, now this uh, uh, run feature will verify everything is in the number one or the number two position but preferably number one then we'll go through a one-on-one -on -one switch here 
together with the uh, checks here to uh, finalize most of the main panel setup. Uh, then we'll set the retro delay to normal. Then we once again, uh, since there's been half an hour, uh, or actually over an hour since we got in, we'll need to ensure that the control fuel is still uh, at 100%, which they are. And then uh, it requests us to go into notes and then write down the cabin pressure, cabin temperature, shoot temperature, shoot pressure, primary oxygen and secondary oxygen. This is good to do uh, to uh, keep track of what the values were uh, before liftoff. And this is good in terms of knowing if something seems off or off nominal uh, once you're, for example, in orbit. Then uh, let's get back to the checklist. Then it basically goes through and ensures that uh, everything is in their nominal uh, configuration, which they are. And uh, uh, if you don't like this auto proceed uh, function, if you uh, would like to manually go through this but still have this checklist guidance, you can always go into settings and then uh, disable the auto proceed uh, feature of this uh, system here. That's something that you can do on the main menu and you can hit settings. But I like to just go through and, uh, uh, and uh, execute the things that I need to and then you're done. Uh, makes it a little bit quicker but obviously uh, if you're learning out it's always good to go through this manually without using this uh, system uh, at all so the next checklist is the full internal power at, at t minus 10 minutes so uh, full internal power t minus 10 minutes and then i'll use time scale the main purpose of this checklist is to switch from uh, umbilical, umbilical power to um, the internal power, so all the electrical components are actually powered by the batteries and internal systems. So nothing is kind of relying on anything external outside of the spacecraft. It's always good to uh, make sure that this works before ignition uh, as well, but you also need to disconnect from the tower. Uh, the way that you do this, you can hit the run if you want to. Um, so, uh, switch full internal power, monitor capsule battery voltage and current while the blockhouse switches uh, to external power. So we can hit, let this be on M. Then uh, it will basically request me to remove the external power. And this is something that you can do from this functional button. You can toggle this using C, then switch to internal power. Now you can see that uh, uh, we have load on our internal electrical systems on the main bus. And the same applies to these other uh, main batteries as well. Then we'll need to make sure that the isolated battery is set to norm and standby uh, battery is set to off. So norm and off. And now everything should be ready for flight. And uh, right now, uh, we are in a state where you typically enter the Mercury capsule. So when you start a mission uh, in Mercury, that doesn't require you to go through all of these initial steps. You will be in uh, this uh, configuration here with some minor exceptions, such as the time zero cover being uh, set to off. And then you'll have a couple of uh, switches that you have already armed. But uh, this checklist will go through everything and make sure that you finalize all of the last uh, settings. And then it will request us to do the radio check. Uh, all good. This one is done. Monitor battery one during ascent and everything else is uh, all uh, good and ready for uh, ignition. The reason why there are some slight differences when you execute the final checks versus uh, uh, if you do all of these above is that some of these switches uh, uh, will need to be configured correctly in the final checks. Uh, so final checks is what you'll need to do once you um, uh, get ready for the final uh, five minutes before flight. And if some of these switches are not uh, set correctly, then 
uh, you will do that uh, by following this checklist. So this checklist kind of just verifies everything and then uh, puts the, the final switches in their correct position uh, just to have something to do uh, the first time you fly a Mercury mission. But ideally, um, uh, if you want uh, most realism, then you will follow these checklists before a mission. But with that, we have uh, around seven minutes left. I executed the T-5 uh, checklist a little bit early um, just to save some time. So uh, with that, I think that all of these procedures, uh, the final procedures and the ascent has been covered in the previous lessons. So uh, with that, I thank you for, uh, I want to say thank you for playing re-entry and thanks for watching.